You want to take your game to the next level? You want to be a world champion? Take the Friday training stack. Victor Conte's Friday training stack has brought me to the next level. Everything that I take on a daily basis. The Friday training stack is the best thing out right now. Devin Haney, I'm Snack Strong. Get it now, right now. Uh, I learned just uh, prepare better. Uh, just don't rely on my skills and my talent. Just physically prepare myself. Now you change trainers from what I gather. You now are led by your amateur trainer, Gilberto Martinez. Why did you decide to make that change? Uh, because um, I need a, a coach that um, has a plan, a game plan, and a, a method to the madness that we have to go put, put ourselves through to train and, and, and get the best out of us. Now, Brandon Lee has been wiping out his opponents. He's a knockout artist, but where do you feel you have the advantages over Lee? Uh, well, we won't find out on Saturday. Honestly, I really haven't watched video. I know his box record is what it, his record is what it is, but I mean, we won't we won't see Saturday. All right, that is Juan Geraldez, ladies and gentlemen. And now we move on to Brandon Lee, 23 and 0, 21 knockouts from La Quinta, California. 14 straight wins by either knockout or TKO. Brandon, will it be 15 straight against Juan Geraldez on Saturday night? Um, I'm going there to win, so it don't matter how it goes down. Um, I might knock him out, I might go the distance, but at the end of the day, I'm going there to win and do what I do. Do you feel any additional pressure knowing from the public that they expect you to go out there and wipe out your opponents and win in such impressive fashion? No, not at all. Because like I said, I turn everybody out and I go in there, I do what I do. Um, it doesn't matter if I go for the knockout, I go for the win. I'm going in there to win and come Saturday night 24 and 0. When I examine your record, I think it's crazy to me that you haven't been past the fourth round. Do you like the fact that you wipe out your opponents quickly or are you of the mindset that at some point, maybe even this fight, that you want to go six rounds, eight rounds, ten rounds, or the distance? I don't get paid for, for overtime, so it don't matter if I go one round or ten rounds. Juan, you're the underdog coming into this fight against Brandon Lee. Does that motivate you? Does that bother you? Or do you pay no attention to it? Um, I've, been, I've been underdog before against an undefeated fighter with... Uh, a winning record or whatever, but uh, there's nothing, it's, it's whatever to me. It's just boxing. He got to box me. How do you see the fight playing out on Saturday? Juan. Um, just showing off what, where, I was gonna, where I'm supposed to be going and with my skills and my talent, speed and powers, and my jab, everything. Do you think we're going to go back? Because the fight that stands out to me when it comes to your career is the win over Jose Miguel Borrego. He was a power puncher. He was coming up in the ranks. Do you think that we're going to sort of get that kind of performance against Brandon Lee on Saturday? I think it's going to be better. Even better? Even better. Why so? Because uh, I got a good coach and I got Gil Martinez in my corner and uh, I prepare myself physically, mentally, uh, all around. Yep. Enough of a push to finally get that title shot that you so covet. Hi, everybody. This is my Samsung. This is my promotion. He helped me I, because there's no good talk English. The, you know. <laughs> well, that will help him up uh, to answer this question. Well, I know for the past... Go ahead, Samson. Does he have anything more to add? He asked me if you can repeat the question. Oh, he wants me to repeat the question. You've been the mandatory challenger for the IBF Welterweight Championship for over two years, going on three years now. Do you yeah. think a win over Crowley gets you to that title shot? Yeah, yeah. The, I, the, I win this IBF eliminator fight. This, then I want to fight this. Uh, no, I... Jangim Trolley Nakat Plan Yutub, also El Spence Plan, Champion Jangin All Bar Mochman. Definitely, uh, I try to, I will win this fight, and then after three years, I deserve a shot to be a champion. Yeah. Now, I know for the past five weeks, you've been working with Manny Robles, who used to train the likes of Andy Ruiz, former heavyweight champion of the world, also super welterweight contender Terrell Gashay. Oh, how much have you learned working with Manny and his entire team? 
Şöyle biz meni rabbiz muhabbimiz bilen cüda köp işledik. Ben cengimiz ya cüda ham köp ne kadar zorlar dut kazıp cengi açta yerlendik. Rolly is a great trainer. I learn a lot and I will show that on Saturday night. You fought two straight southpaws in Javier Flores and Luis Calazo. Crowley will be your third yeah. straight southpaw. Do you feel that that benefits you because it's not often that a fighter goes head to head against three straight southpaws in their career? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, two softball is good. The third one, I will knock him out, and then I will go to knock Spencer out. You're saying you're going to knock out Errol Spence? Yeah. I don't need translation on that. <laughs> My goodness. Okay, Kudratilo Abdukukarov. Well, let's meet the man that will be standing across the ring from him. 19 and 0, nine knockouts from Peterborough, Ontario, Canada. Cody, when you hear Kudratilo say he's going to knock you out, and then he's going to go on to knock out Errol Spence, do you think that he's overlooking you? Um, first thing I want to say is, Mom, look who's on TV now. Uh, shout out <laughs> to my family back home in Canada. Um, getting back to your question, you know, I got offered this fight back in April. I was on vacation. I was in the mountains. I was just chilling. I accepted this fight five weeks notice. Signed a contract without even questioning it. Next thing you know, this guy backs out. A couple months later, same thing. Now we're finally here. I have a feeling that they're just looking over me. Um, they don't really know what I'm capable of doing. There's a reason why I've been in the ring with you know 20 plus world champions. People outside the boxing ring, they don't know who I am, but everybody inside the boxing scene knows who I am and what I'm capable of. And he's 100% overlooking me mentioning Earl Spence's name. Come Saturday night, this, this guy's gonna find himself in waters that he can't quite swim in. You know, I survive in environments where most people get destroyed. So Saturday night, Someone better throw this man some water wings. Whoa, Samson, uh, what is his response to, uh, s you know, sort of summarizing that, that he feels you guys are overlooking him and he's gonna take you and drown you in those deep waters. What's his response? In Torah, books, and should all of that He say that you have no sympathy for them. Don't put any excuse. I will knock you out anyway. Cody says he'll knock you out anyway. What do you want to do to him on Saturday night on Showtime Championship Boxing? All you got to do is see who's standing in the center of the ring from the time the bell rings and who's running around till the bell stops. Now you're coming off of you're supposed to fight Gabriel Maestre back in August, but you came down with COVID. The one thing... You know, we see different fighters and athletes respond in different ways to responding and returning to action from dealing with that deadly disease. But how are you feeling physically heading into this fight on Saturday? Uh, I'm feeling fantastic, healthy. Um, you know, I'm a world-class athlete. Um, this is the level I'm supposed to be on. There's a reason why people can't keep up with me in, in the ring. Um, there's a reason why they can't keep up with my punch count is because I am just a machine. And I have a feeling that this, this Kudrutello on Saturday night is, is going to find out that maybe it's not a human in front of him, it's a machine, because this dude's just not stopping. Do you think that he is ranked number one right now in the IBF rankings? He's the contender, the number one contender. He has been that way for over two years to Errol Spence's IBF welterweight crown. Do you think a win for you puts you in that conversation into that top five ranking where you can clamor for a world title shot? A hundred percent. I've been waiting for this opportunity. This is where I belong. This is where I live. This is where I thrive. Um, I feel at home right now. So a win over Kudratello puts me exactly where I already know I am. I already am a world champion in my head. The, the world just doesn't know it yet. Um, it's um, an honor to fight with my idol, sir, in the ring. Um, 
Yeah, I'm so excited too. In your last fight, you were victorious over former world champion Emmanuel Rodriguez by split decision. What did you learn in that fight that you feel will benefit you against Donair on Saturday? Like when I look at my last fight, uh, I need to improve my um, um, hit, hit movement and some. I need to like um, throw, throw some more punches. All right, Ray Mart Gabali, ladies and gentlemen, we'll get back to him. But now I want to bring up a man who has been there, done that many times over again. A four division world champion. He was the 2012 Fighter of the Year, involved in the 2019 Fight of the Year against Naoya Inoue. Coming up or back on May 29th, knocked out Nordine Obali to become the oldest Bantamweight champion in history. Ladies and gentlemen, from Boja, Philippines, fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, it gives me with great honor and pleasure to welcome the WBC Bantamweight Champion of the World, the Filipino Flash, Nonito Donaire. Thank you. Thank you. Nonito, with everything that you've accomplished in your career, why do you decide to continue to fight at this high level, what motivates the Filipino Flash at 39 years of age? I think for me, after the Inoue fight, I was brought about a purpose, you know. Um, after becoming fighter of the year, I was going up and down, kind of floating in, in, you know, in, in, in fights. But after that fight, I felt that I can do this. And I think the purpose in me, and this is why I came in really strong with, with Ubali and, and very confident today, is because I have a purpose, you know, and that purpose is becoming undisputed champion of the world. So with that being said, you are taking on a fellow Filipino in Ray Mart Gabalio. You haven't fought a fellow Filipino since we have to go back November 2nd, 2002, nearly 20 years. You fought Mark Sales. What does it mean for you to be stepping inside the ring against somebody who's 14 years younger than you, but he's 24-0, 20 knockouts, he's very hungry, he's got a big power shot, and he's looking to go ahead and sort of dethrone his idol? Well, for me, I'm actually, first and foremost, I'm proud that there's another Filipino, you know, like the Mexican have done throughout the years, you know, where they're fighting in, in this level. And for me, I'm actually proud that there is another Filipino at this type of level, you know, in this type of stage to be uh, sharing this ring with me. And um, I'm proud of that. Um, you know, I know that, that uh, Raymart is very hungry. Uh, he has a big dream. Like everybody coming from the Philippines, they, we, they, we have a dream. You know, uh, he has a dream and, and I know that he, has a, he will be at his best. And this is why I'm prepared at my best as well. Ray Martz, in a recent interview, you said in preparation for Nonito Donaire that you have to look out for that vicious left hook. We've seen him put away many fighters with that left hook. In training camp, how have you been preparing to deal with that vaunted left hook that Nonito Donaire uses? Uh, um, every time we train in the, in the gym, um, we always like, um, they, they always, um, throwing me like same 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 punches with my uh the hook of uh, Nito but I told that um not that's the only that that's not the only one need to need to be like um what you call this oh no like um I can I can di lang bantayan ba uh, he's saying that they're not, not just the left foot. <laughs> <laughs> the, the respect they have with each other. No, Nito Donaire's translating for his opponent. I've never seen anything like that in my life. Go ahead, uh, continue with the translation. So he, I can find it he's amusing. He's saying that it's not just the left hook that, that he needs to look out for. I also have other arsenals that are um, that that to look out for as well. Not just the left hook. Unbelievable. He's trash talking himself. Nonetheless. My final question, my final few questions for Raymar. You are 14 years younger than Nonito Donaire. Is it advantageous for you to push the pace knowing that he is 39 years of age? Does a faster pace, more high action, high volume favor you? No, I did it. Um, um, I know like um, even though the age is not, uh, it's just like a, a number, but I know that he's, um, he's 
His movement is still there, same as before. Now, Nonito, you've been in there with every style under the sun, but he does have 20 knockouts of his 24 victories. Do you think that your experience is going to play a factor in the fight, and how do you plan on combating the power that he has? Well, I've faced a lot of guys like Inoue, Darchinian, and, you know, even Walters, um, all these powerful guys, and, and the thing about being experienced is we have no fear of, of it. And so, therefore, we were mainly focused on our strategy and, and the variety of, of style that comes forward in my head that I can take advantage of his style. Um, ultimately, um, just 100% ready, we, we build on mental uh, fortitude so that whatever the case happens, we're always going to pu push through uh, adversity and, and, and be ready because I believe that we are only as strong as our mind uh, can be. And so I know that I'm 100% because my mind is to the roof or to the moon. <laughs> I love it. Raymar, my final question to you. What would a win over Nonito Donaire when Jimmy Lennon Jr. were to say and the new WBC Bantamweight Champion of the World mean to you on Saturday night? What would that moment mean uh, to you to become the new world champion as if you were to defeat Nonito Donaire? Nonito just doing it all, I swear. Unbelievable. Uh, um, so, um, like, I'm so very happy, but uh, because um, of my like, for my like, um, duge, duge na ako na pangandoy, makuha na ako. He's saying that it's it's you know it's it's it gives him great pleasure and, and happiness because it's what he's been looking for all his life to be announced as a world champion. Nonito, you've been very uh, vocal about the respect between the two. Uh, how much does it mean for you to sort of be sharing the ring with the guy who looked up to you and the fact that you don't have to trash talk, you're translating for him for crying out loud. So, and he's giving his predictions, but what does this mean for you as you sort of are on the latter stages of your career? Um, you know, it's, I mean, I, I'm, I'm just here and, and enjoying that moment of, of whatever I have in this, in this, uh, in this career. I mean, I, I wake up in the morning and, and I'm excited. Every day I'm excited. I'm in a gym. I feel like I'm 21 and I feel like I can do this for another 10 years. Another 10 years? Wait a minute. You're going <laughs> to fight till you're 50? Yeah, why not? Why not? You know, it, all where, these Where's guys... Rachel at? Is Rachel okay <laughs> with that to fight Well, it depends 50? on the queen, right? The queen depends <laughs> on the queen where, 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 uh, where my life stands. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, just, I'm just, each day I take it, each fight I take it, and I'm just grateful for every moment of it. You know, and I love the fact that, and I want to bring it all out there, that this is a gentleman's sport. You know, I believe that it gives a lot of credibility of a fighter when he can speak to somebody with respect, with sportsmanship. You know, and that's what I bring out there, is, is to inspire people that it's not about being on top and talking crap about other people. So yes, there's, there's things like that, and that's okay. It's part of the game, but I believe that uh, a greater man is when he can look into his, his opponent's eyes and shake hand with them and go for the kill when they're in the ring. You know, at the end of it all, it's, it's a sport, it's a game, it's, it's, it's a career. You know, and again, everybody's different, they have their own perspective. For me, my perspective is I love the, the sport of boxing. It's what given me everything that I have and I'm going to represent, represent it to the best of my ability with respect, with honor and integrity. You talked about... You talked about unification. Assuming all goes well and you're victorious over Raymar Caballo on Saturday on Showtime Championship Boxing at Dignity Health Sports say, Park. And you say, still, you say new for him, so you gotta say Okay, so still. assuming that Jimmy Lennon says, and still, you know, the WBC Bantamweight Champion of the World. As you look at unification, when it comes to Naoya Inoue, I was in Japan, that was an amazing fight. Or also a man who you talked about respect, there's been some trash talk with you know, on the side of John Riel Casimero. He holds the WBO Bantamweight Championship. Where do you lean towards? Is that next for you? Assuming that all goes according to plan and Jimmy Lennon says, and still WBC Bantamweight Champion of the world. The very key, and I will always say this, the guy that I truly trust in this game is Richard Schaefer, and I'm always going to leave it up to him. So it's up to Richard Schaefer and your promotional team to go ahead and dictate as to what's next for Nonito Donaire. But I'm going to go after all of them. Okay, so in a way, in order, 
Donaire, or not Donaire, but uh, Inoue or, uh, you know, Casimero, who would you want? Well, they both have the belt that I'm looking for, but again, whatever's easier, and I'm, again, I'm going to leave it up to Richard, because Richard knows how to make fights. All right, now we're going to open, up, to open it up to questions from the media. If you have questions for the fighters up here, by all means, raise your hand and ask them questions. Hi, this question is for Nonito, uh, Miguel Maravilla from Fight News. Nonito, you fought numerous times at at uh, Carson, uh, StubHub Center, Home Depot Center, and now it's the Dignity Health Sports Park. There's been lots of memorable fights. Now you're fighting a fellow Filipino. Why is this fight going to be memorable and the same way as you know some of the memorable fights that well, StubHub I think that has hosted? For me, it just shows where my uh, experience and, and the level of, of my performance is, is going to be on this fight. But mainly, I, I am really proud that there are two Filipinos um, fighting, um, you know, in this stage. So, yeah, ultimately, that's, that's, that's my case, why it's memorable for me. Um, but the performance that I intend to, uh, to showcase uh, on Saturday is also going to be um, uh, not, not worthy. Okay. Um, I can talk too much like but I will do my best in the ring. Ah see see what Ah tata. Sabi mo na lang sa bisaya. Ah buhat na rin ako tanan akong ginabuhat sa sa training para gwapo ko performance sa sa dula. He uh, said that he will do everything that they have uh, done during training in preparation for this fight. Uh, <laughs> Prediction. Go on. Um, nindot na dula. Uh, nindot na yung dula among mapakita sa tanan din. Ninkamot nga madakulaw ko anin dula. He will, uh, he is predicting that it will be a very good fight and he will do the best he can to win this fight. Well, I love the respect being shown by Raymar Caballo. Nonito Donaire, the oldest Bantamweight champion in history, the reigning WBC Bantamweight champion of the world. How do you see your fight playing out against Raymar Caballo? Raymar is a really good fighter, um, but you know, we we're very, very confident. And the only thing that I have in my head, you know, because I got bigger fish to fry, um, uh, bigger fish to, to, to fish, <laughs> to, <laughs> to go after, you know. Um, and I'm, like he said, he'll do his best, I'll do my best. But in my confidence, victory is, is, is the only thing. I'm burning all the ships. There is no going back without victory. Nonito Donaire, ladies and gentlemen, all six fighters a part of our Showtime triple header. This upcoming Saturday night, give them a round of applause as we come your way from Dignity Health Sports Park in Carson. Before we go live, we'll have the replay of Gervonta Davis.
Wait, in the back, guys. Guys, in the back. This up nice and strong. Thank you. Yeah.